If you saw this one coming, if you saw the Bucks going to Minnesota and winning the way they did on the road in a very hostile environment against a team that last year won an awful lot of games, I think 13, 14 games, I didn't see it. I'll be, I'll be honest. I will put my hand up and say I did not see this happening, but there they were at the end of the game. 20-17 to 17 win over the Vikings, the Buccaneers, behind Baker Mayfield, behind Dave Canales. Both of them off to horrifically slow starts. Uh, somehow, some way, managed to get the dub. And, oh, by the way, it was uh, the winning points, courtesy of Chase McLaughlin's 57-yard go-ahead field goal. It reminds me of, like, years ago, and I didn't hear Gene Deckerhoff's call for this one, but it reminds me of years ago, Matt Bryant one day uh, was playing Philadelphia at Raymond James, and it was one of these weird back-and-forth games, and the Eagles basically had them, but... Uh, the only thing the Bucks could do was attempt a 63-yard field goal, <laughs> and I and Matt Bryant tried it and made it uh, uh, something ridiculous like a 62, 61, 62 yards, something like that. And the call by Gene Deckerhoff was, "Bucks win it the old-fashioned way." Matt Bryant, you're my hero. And I thought the old-fashioned way, where they used to kick 60-yard field goals. Well, they kicked one's 57, and and what was remarkable about that, not the fact that it was just his career high or tied it is that this is why they got the guy. Like, mm-hmm. they, they literally said, we need somebody that can kick long field goals. Who knew that he would need a 57-yarder in week one to get that done? But they did. Uh, and they were able uh, defensively to get off the field with a three and out and then held the ball like the last almost four minutes with some really great plays by Baker Mayfield running it and Chris Godwin catching it. Um, tell you what, this was an impressive win, Steve. I don't know what the Vikings are. I don't know what they're going to do. And I, and I also believe that as many games in the NFL are lost as, as are won, and I, and I know if you're the Vikings, you got to be sick, and their fans are, because they had three turnovers, you know, and one was a, an interception by Chris Isian, the rookie, at like the Bucks one-yard line that he just took the ball away from the receiver. Another one was a botched snap, I think, somewhere inside the Bucks 20, uh, where Kirk Cousins just didn't receive the ball. Uh, and then they had a sack fumble, that led to a field goal. So it's like 17 points were off the board in a game that you lose by three at home. So I think the Vikings will kick themselves. There's a lot of bad ball in week one. But, man, you know, it was impressive. Like, the Bucks did some things that showed a maturity about them. And Baker Mayfield, for all the, you know, hand-wringing that's gone on, and, and did he have a great statistical game? No. In fact, I wrote that, you know, he was pretty damn boring, to be honest with you. But that boring approach uh, and them sort of hanging with it and, and finding some rhythm in the second half, end of the first half in a two-minute drill, coming out the second half with about a nine-minute drive for a touchdown. Those two touchdowns, you know, going back-to-back like that really really turned the game. And you got to give them a ton of credit, man. I mean, the guy, the guy hung in there and didn't make mistakes and made plays when they needed to. I thought it was a, a solid win for a team that, that really – not only did nobody think they were going to win this game, nobody thinks they're going to win any games this year. Well, this was exactly the recipe the Bucks had to have to win this game. Mm-hmm. You needed your defense to step up and create turnovers, yep. which they did. Yep. You needed timely stops. I mean, you know, and, and Todd Bowles talked about this, I heard, you know, in the post game, but mm-hmm. Justin Jefferson's going to get his yards. Oh, and he did. And he did. <laughs> about 157 right. of them. But he didn't get in the end zone. No, he didn't. Like, You're right. Okay, you run up and down the middle of the field all you want. But they they p- prevented him from scoring in the end zone. They got timely red zone turnovers. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Justin Jefferson's hit, that was pretty impressive. Oh, my God. <laughs> Took his helmet off, right? Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you what, was an impressive hit. You want to talk about hits? How about Vita Vey on, on oh, Levante David? I can't believe he came back. <laughs> I can't either. What was the protocol test for that, can I ask you? Levante said, I heard uh, TJ Reeves interview him on the post game on the radio. And, you know, he said, uh, you know, I went in the tent and everything. He goes, but thank goodness, because that boy's big. I, I guess for me to survive that, <laughs> I'm paraphrasing, yeah. but it was, yeah, yeah. Uh, Vita Vea absolutely destroyed Levante David. Le- Levante told us, he goes, you know, I've, I've avoided friendly fire pretty much my whole career. He goes, I wish I'd avoided that one too, but I didn't. But this, oh, was, that, that was... But this was the recipe uh, for what they have to do. Their, their defense is definitely more experienced than their offense. Yeah, and the offense got off to a really bad start. 
Oh, yeah, it did. And when you're targeting yeah, Co'Keefe, three of your first four pass plays. What the hell, man? <laughs> you take the least athletic guy on the field, and that's the game plan? Is that? I know he's not the primary receiver because, no. frankly, every play starts with Mike being the primary receiver. But if a progression keeps taking you to Co'Keefe mm-hmm. and, and you can't you can't seem to hit him, uh, you might mm-hmm. want to find another guy. I mean, it's just weird to me that but, it turned out like that. Yeah, they weren't able to rush the ball at all. At all. The no. the game plan early was a lot of Coquif. Mike Evans drops a long pass. He did. I thought that should have been a touchdown. Uh, there, I yeah. mean, you know, Mike had a good they day. Didn't execute. Mike had a good yeah. day. He dropped two balls. One was yeah, a touchdown. Did. One was a deep yes. pass. The other one should have been a touchdown. That's correct. Flat out dropped two balls. Yep. Like you can't do that, man. I mean, Baker no. Mayfield needs you to catch those. Yes, he does. Your offense needs you to catch them. But he, he ended up atoning for it. Had a pretty good day. Mm-hmm. But the recipe for this team, particularly early. And and you and I talked about there was a lot of bad football today, and yes. part of it is is no one plays in the preseason anymore. <laughs> That's a huge part, and yeah. it sure looked like the Bucks' offense was the same way. <laughs> it got a little better as the game went. They still haven't been well, able to. Well, if run you the ball, recall, but. they played two series together. Really, when the mm-hmm. offensive line was in a hole, that was all they exactly. had was two series. And, what, and Mike didn't play that game. No, that's correct. So, yeah. um, you know, so you add all that up. But it was the defense doing what they have to do to keep the team in the game until the offense got on enough of a roll. Mm-hmm. And that, that drive to open the second half was impressive. Oh, it was a beautiful one. Yeah. All the way down, the, how long it took. It, I mean, that's that's what that's what you need Baker Mayfield to do, and he did it in, in the times you needed him to do it today. Yeah. I mean, Mayfield, you know, you talk about modest numbers. He was 21 of 34 mm-hmm. for just 173 yards. But you know what he had? Two really good touchdown passes and no interceptions. Also, no fumbles. Mm -hmm. Very few penalties. um, No pre-snap penalties. In other words, he just operated smartly. You know, he made good decisions. Uh, uh, He, he, you know, he trusted his defense to get stops when they needed him to. And and then when you know that two for one sort of score at the end of the first half in that two minute hurry up mode, and then to come out in the second half and start with the ball and, and drive it for almost nine minutes. And score another touchdown on a, on an adjustment really by Trey Palmer. Now Palmer is not the first, second, maybe the third uh, option there, but basically he just stayed alive in the back of the end zone. And and you know that's where you see Baker's sort of his his craftiness, his genius work because he he more or less just he sidearmed that ball. You know what I mean? He just kind of dropped down and threw it in there. And and Palmer's been making plays all the preseason, but yeah, just you know kind of grind away. Um, hang in the game, hang in the game, make big plays when you need them. And then to, and to do this on the road, like, so they're up by a field goal after that bomb uh, of a, uh, of a field goal by McLaughlin and the defense comes out and gets a three and out And mm-hmm. the play that Carlton Davis makes on what's going to be a first down pass on uh, third down, you know, that, that was a terrific play by him. And so, then you know Vikings have to punt, thinking it was all sport. instinctual too. Oh, totally. And, yeah. And, and he, I, I heard, I was listening to the post game, and I heard T.J. Reeves ask him, and he says mm-hmm. they ran that play earlier. Mm-hmm. He goes, "That wasn't my man, right?" But I, I knew what man. was coming, so I saw it and I reacted. Yeah. And you know, maybe save the game. I think so because you don't know if they get that first down and the horn starts blowing and you know the school chant and all that. Next thing you know. Uh, they're at least maybe in field goal range or, or going to take the lead. So that got them off the field. Now you think, okay, it's really hard. It's hard to hold the ball for four minutes in the last four. You practice it, mm-hmm. four-minute situations and stuff like that. Um, but it's hard to do. And and they managed to never give the ball back. And I was so impressed with that. I was impressed with it. there was one play on third down. Baker needed three yards. He put his head down, barreled over a guy, and got four. You know, that's when you see the competitor come out in him. You know what I mean? And look, I, Tom Brady's the greatest quarterback of all time. Nothing will ever replace that, I don't think, in, in my lifetime, that somebody will do what he's done. But he did it from the pocket and all of that. In today's football, it sure helps. It really does help if you've got a quarterback who's not a runner, but somebody that can pick up a first down with his feet or two, especially in that situation where they absolutely needed it. And then the play that Godwin makes to end the game, uh, on that stick route, you know, mm-hmm. where he just fingertip catches it and somehow gets his both feet down. I mean, that that's an A++ play, you know. I mean, it really was. Um, that was just clutch as clutch can be. So they showed up when they needed to. Now, they got a lot to work on <laughs> because 
we wondered about Dave Canales. I did anyway. You know, I mean, the last the last place he called were for Carson High School uh, as an offensive coordinator many, many years ago. I think it was like 05 or something. But that's a long time. And, and you know things happen. You have about 10 seconds as a coordinator to make a call in time for your, your team to get it, uh, you know, line up, all that stuff. Um, and it didn't go well. And the reason it didn't go well is not be necessarily that Dave Canales doesn't know what he's doing. It's that Brian Flores really does. <laughs> Brian Flores had some stuff dialed up that was crazy effective. But more than that, and and the Bucks used to do this back in the day when they had such a good defense, and it, it's so hard to do. But they would show, you know, cover zero, you know, full bonsai blitz is coming. And Baker would check to a protection, right? Mass protect, you know, hot route, all that stuff, okay? And then right before the snap, they'd come out of it. You know, they'd, they'd drop eight guys, and they'd rush three. And the problem is you only got two or three men in the route, and so they're covered up, and Baker had nowhere to go with the ball. And this kept happening in the first half over and over and over again until they got in that two-minute situation where they couldn't really substitute, uh, and it got a little trickier, you know, at that point. Um, and they went down and they scored. But it was a real – it was a – they were playing chess, not checkers, as they say. And Brian Flores was winning. And, and what Dave Canales found out, and I'm sure he knew this because he's been in the NFL for a while, but was like, yeah, you know those guys over there? You think you have answers? They got answers too. They're really good at what they do. And and I will say this, if you're ranking coordinators, Flores is going to be at or near the top. So he, he had a tough draw for his first game. But – and Bowles talked about this. You know what? Second half, he made some adjustments. He said Baker got better. Um, Canales got better at calling it. And you could see the improvement, you know, in the second half. Um, so I I was impressed. I also, also like the balance. Yes. And, even and though. What, 34 passes for, for Baker, one sack, and then there was 33, what, 33 rushes. Runs. Right. You know, now, this is what's interesting about that. You, you know, you don't go – you'd love to say, well, we were balanced, we were 50-50. Mm -hmm. What you want is yards, however you can get them, right? Yes. But it's nice to keep your defense fresh or get get them off the field or whatever. Um, but – Honest to God, like, if you'd have told me after all the emphasis that they had on running the football, and, you know, a year ago they were the worst rushing team in the league mm -hmm. um, by far. And and they had the worst rushing, the fewest attempts, number one, which they obviously had more tonight than or yesterday than they could have. But they averaged 3.5 yards a carry a year ago. They went out there and they ran it that many times for 2.2 .2 yards a carry. Their longest run was six yards. Mm -hmm. So they had 33 rushing attempts and only averaged 2.2. .2. They're going to be back at the bottom of, of the league probably today, you know, when it's, when it's all added up. Um, and so if you're predicating this defense on, or this offense on rushing and play action and bootlegs, eh, 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 eh. Yeah, I, I don't I, know. They, they didn't do a good job, but I like that they didn't abandon the run just because they did it not didn't quit work, it. which is no. kind of what happened the last few years. Yeah, well, they we, would give up oh, on it. Oh, we didn't get very much in the first five runs. Okay, I'm passing it every down from here on out. Of course, they might should have given up on it sooner today, well, too, because I don't know. It's very possible. 2.2 .2 a carry, man. That's just – that's that's well, your head they against they only the averaged 3.6 a play. Well, that that's true, yeah. I mean, you know, so you're only averaging five yards a pass play. I mean, it wasn't like they were efficient. Yeah, you weren't bombing away. Play. No. They were chipping weren't. away. I mean, that that's why – that's how you get a nine-minute drive to start a half. Yeah. You're, you're not throwing the ball 30 yards down the field. Like Although, every, everything you know, the, was chipping away. The shots they did take, I thought they had a chance to hit and didn't. I thought, mm -hmm. Like you, to your point, Mike, Mike dropped one. And well, I think the only play over 16 yards was the Mike Evans touchdown. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, you know, everything was dink and dunk. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You know, I mean, offensively, they did enough to win, but it wasn't good. No, it would look bad. Like, they've yeah. got a lot to, to, I mean, a couple plays here and there, but. You know, this isn't going to beat teams consistently week in and week out. No, of course not. And I and I didn't think, you know, of course, from the angle we had, we're kind of behind the play. We're almost in the end zone. Um, we almost have that view or a little, little side corner there. But I, I thought there were some running lanes. And I, I, I'll say this. Mm -hmm. I've not been impressed with Rashad White for some time. 
I know he won the job, you know, eventually got the job the second half last year uh, for Leonard Fournette, who absolutely wasn't getting it done. And he had his, his only 100-yard game was against Seattle over in Germany, and he looked really good that night. You know, he made, made a Seahawk fly, as I say. Um, but that's been it. And, you know, I, I watch him run, and I see some of the patience. Is, it's good. It's his style, whatever. But he wasn't making anything. He wasn't making people miss. He wasn't running through tackles. Um, it just, it just didn't look good, you know? And if he's going to be the number one running back now, I thought Sean Tucker did look good, you know? I thought he did. I, it looked like, and granted, I haven't seen the all 22. I watched every playback yet. But it looks like he missed a couple cutback lanes. Could have Sean Tucker did, you mean? Yeah, it looked like there was a couple plays he could have gone bigger. Maybe. Um, not that he ran bad, just it looked like there was a couple openings where if he would have gone, the, you know, cut the other direction, but yeah. Well, I'll tell you what he had a. I mean, he had a better, sort of a better average. Um, mm-hmm. You know, he, he averaged well. He just averaged three yards a carry, but I think they had one called back. I mean, um, he only had five carries, so it's kind of hard to. Yeah, I mean, and, and then you know Chase Edmonds had uh, a couple for eight yards. Yeah. It, it was bad, but you know, thirty-three for seventy-three. Is just not cutting it at two point two average, and the longest being six. Um, yeah, a couple, you know, one run that was six yards. So it was grim. I mean, th- this team, you know, they came into it saying we're going to run the ball. We got Dave Canales. You know, we're going to play action. We know those things, and then you're not able to do anything of it because those guys watched tape too, and they were ready. They were prepared for what Canales was going to do. But if there's going to be an improvement, it's going to be between week one and week two because this is the, operationally they these guys, this coaching staff had not called a game um, in a very, you know, at all together. So I, I'm confident that they'll get better as the year goes on. I just didn't understand. Like, we're towards the end of the first half. It's like, Mike Evans doesn't have a target. <laughs> like, can you throw him the ball? Um, and, and, and Coach Keefe had a bunch. But they got through it, man. It was a happy locker room. They were fired up. Should be. Um, you know, they, they, they don't have any major injury concerns, although – uh Levante has to see how he checks out after a night of sleep with the you know the dinged up head and whatnot um so there's that but uh yeah but otherwise it was a really really successful opening day for them and there's there was a lot of bad ball out there as you mentioned earlier and the Bucks could have easily been one of them but they weren't hey anytime they, anytime you open the season one and know it's a good day oh yeah and when you yeah, do that absolutely. on the road it's even better terrific terrific road when you're playing with house money a team that what, won 13 games last year. Yeah, and and have a really damn good quarterback yep. and an unbelievable receiver. And I think they Which, were they were what eight and one at home last year. Yeah, and and a similar type record in one score games. Like they were incredible in one score games last year. Right. I mean, the Bucks took it from them and and they gave it away. I thought, but they they were they were up to the task to taking it, and so. Yeah, impressive opening day win. I mean, at Minnesota, impressive opening day win. And you look around the league, and there's, there's like I said, we. How about the Giants, man? Holy God! Is, is it still forty nothing, or has it gotten worse? It, it's forty nothing. I think. Uh, I think. I think the Giants are going to get Alex Jones, or going to Alex Jones, going to get uh, their quarterback killed, Danny Dimes. Yes. Yeah, he's done. He's just, he's still getting hit. He's still getting sacked. Having to throw it every down. Down forty to nothing. In a you know what I'm doing? If it's too. forty to nothing in pouring rain with four forty five, I'm handing that thing off and punting. I don't care. This game's over. I am not going to do anything but get myself hurt. You know, and that that's that's all that's going to happen here. I'd I'd have him out of the game. But now he just took a I cheap know? shot on a guy from off sides. That yeah, ought, that ought to be a bigger penalty. That should be a bigger penalty. Totally agree. So now. There were some weird games around the F. So, so the Bucks are coming home now for the home opener, and they play Chicago. And, boy, Chicago did not look good against the Green Bay Packers and lost to Jordan Love in his, in his start there. So you give them a puncher's chance. There will be a lot of Bears fan and all that, and I, I think that, you know, they'll play better. I think Fields will play better. But um, that, that now becomes a very winnable game. And if they get that one, let's say they get the Bears – now you can't do any worse than two and two before the bye week, and and that's a good place to be, I think, in this division. Um, you know, the Saints were fortunate to come back and hang on and win, um, but I, 
I, I, it's about winning games while you're developing, you know, and Dave Canales got baptism by fire, Baker Mayfield, you know, if he'd have been in Cleveland those years, I, I think he would have taken more shots, more chances. It probably wouldn't have worked out for him. And in Carolina, sort of the same thing. Then he got hurt and he couldn't play. Um, went to the Rams and just played ball, you know, and, and managed to win a game, but like started five, um, just didn't get it done. But Baker in this one was very deliberate. Um, punting the ball's okay. Um, clutch throws when you need them. Like, it's a lot of good here for them to to pull out this victory. And he was at the the forefront of it, sort of as as a point guard there, just dribbling the ball. So, um, you you take the win, and that's the thing. Like, even when Brady was here, he'd say, "Look, we're not going to be very good for a while." Like, you know, it was a new system, or it was this or that. Mm-hmm. And his whole thing was, you have to find a way to win enough games. Until you until you lock it in, until everybody knows what they're doing. But in the meantime, you got to find a way to win those games. And and that, I felt like that's what they did. I felt like, you know what, things were far from perfect, as Baker said, but they found a way to win a game. And if you can do that and improve, you know, I don't know who it was, Bruce Arians or somebody said, it's a hell of a lot easier to improve on your mistakes after you won a game than mm-hmm. when you lose. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, you know, everybody's everybody's willing then, so. Well, we'll you know we'll see what the Bucks are able to do against the Bears, and of course uh, they'll be preparing for that. So check out all our stories. Uh, had a little visit, by the way. By uh, you'll you'll appreciate this. Mark Topkin of the Tampa Bay Times. Who? Yeah, in the press box <laughs> with myself and John Romano covering the National Football League. How about that? Topper was at the ball yard, but not Target Field. He was he was down the street at. Uh, at U.S. Bank Field. Who says he's just a baseball writer? There you go. See? He wrote a wrote a story about Devin White, who's, by the way, all over the field. Mm-hmm. The guy made yes, 12 tackles, one for loss, and then got hurt and came back. Um, he was impressive. You know. You know who I else was impressive? Antoine so, Winfield. Yes. Very, very impressive. And I was going to say to this to you because it's to me it's not a coincidence. When guys are in their contract years, as as those three gentlemen are, I don't know if it's a conscious decision or unconscious or whatever, you find out they, they, they play really good football. Like well, in, a, in, in Winfield's case, and, and that may be part of it, but I think yeah. the other part is not playing nickel corner anymore. Oh, sure, he's better he's as a center He's back to safety, which, and, is, which is where he was fantastic his first couple of years for the Bucs. Yes, and he was, on, he was back in his hometown. Mm-hmm. And he had all these family and friends there. So he was going to ball out no matter what. Oh, absolutely. But I, I think did. the move back to safety. Oh, they had to do it. It's huge for this team. And by the way, they found a guy that could play the slot, I think, in this Chris Isian guy. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was impressive. He was. You know, I, think, I mean, he made a think, couple of mistakes, but that, look. Yeah. He's an uh, undrafted game, rookie. Not a Rutgers, for God's yeah. sakes. You know, and so you, you, you're going to have to take some lumps of the good with the bad. But the good's been absolutely. very, very good. It's been really That was good. a tremendous play to rip that ball. Oh, he took it. Out. He it, it really never intercepted it as much as I think he just took it away from him. Mm-hmm. You know, I think guy had it and he's like, give me that. <laughs> so that was such a huge moment because that's a touchdown. And, you know, when you can take seven off the board and go back the other way, I mean, I can't even tell you just how, how impressive that was. And if you talk to him, and we have a few times, he's a real serious kid. Like, I don't know. If he smiles much or ever, he's just kind of like, yeah, man, well, you know, I did my job and, you know, went back there. And, uh, but he has this sort of like, because he's coached by Grace, you know, toes on the line, blowing the was like, he's into it. You know, he, he is very regimented. He's very, you know, I am here to be serious and play football. And, uh, and good for him because he's done both and, and it's worked out. All right, we'll talk about the race taking three of four of the uh, Seattle Mariners. But first, uh, you guys already know this, but I'm going to tell you anyway. It's hurricane season in Florida. And the good news is that you can keep the power on without breaking the bank. And that's with solar battery backup power. Now, there's no fuel cost to run it, no loud generator noise, no annual maintenance costs. And May Electric Solar, our sponsors, offer a 15-year warranty on their solar battery backup. Plus, solar battery backup sir. Uh, can also save you, I'm sorry, hundreds of dollars uh, each month. If you lose your power, a generator can cost over $2,000 a week just to run. So solar battery backup systems also qualify for a 30% tax credit. That's for new systems. 
or for adding a battery to your existing in-phase solar system, you also get that 30% discount. Uh, trust the pros in solar. They're here for a reason. To learn more about May Electric Solar's battery backup or to get started, call this number 727-819-2862 or visit mayelectricsolar.com. Boy, looking around the league, I, I don't even think the Vikings had the worst day by far. <laughs> I think it's the Sunday night game and what the the egg, the giant pterodactyl egg that the New York Giants have laid. Yeah, I would say that the Giants Ooh. were bad. I think the Steelers were bad and the Bengals were yeah. bad. Yeah, that's right. Your boy, Joe Burrow, did he, did he not look healthy? Uh, looked like, it, one, it was raining there. I think they told yeah, him don't a, really, run. There's a lot of drop balls. He had a calf injury in the preseason. I think they told him don't run. Don't do anything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, the Browns have kind of had their number, but the Bengals played awful. Yeah. Uh, they're they're now one in four on opening days under Zach Taylor. That's crazy to have that quarterback and go one in four? Yeah. Well. So they tend to get better as the year goes on. Or at least that's been what they've done the last few years. Well, I mentioned the Sunday night game, like, so, you know, the Jets own the back page in New York, the sports page, and, and, and you know, rightfully so. I guess Aaron Rodgers is here. Mm-hmm. Jets haven't won anything in forever. But after this game, <laughs> oh, my God. And the thing is, I met Brian Dable. I like Brian Dable an awful lot. He's a good human. He's a really good coach. Everything you could do in this game. Well, when the game starts with a blocked field goal for, for, a, touchdown. for a touchdown. Yeah. And then you throw it to Saquon Barkley who Doink. can't secure it before it gets knocked out. It's not a mm-hmm. catch yet. Right. It gets popped in the air, and that gets returned for a touchdown. And your first two scores for the Cowboys are on defensive plays or special teams defensive plays. Yeah, you're done at that point. And, and then you're chasing it, and it's in the rain, yeah. and it's – Yeah. And then you were just chasing it, and it, you never got any momentum, anything going. And actually, the Giants looked good. They were in the red Up zone, until, and then yeah. they had a bad snap. Yep. Yeah. And then it went downhill from there. Yeah. No, it snowballed quickly. It escalated very quickly. And, you know, I don't. I didn't know what to make of Jones necessarily in the first place. But I'm not thrilled with him now. I mean, it, again, it wasn't his fault. His feel for guys like Dave. I mean, here's the thing. Like, you put in all this work, right? And the only mm-hmm. game you can really focus on or circle on the calendar is the week one, right? Because you know, all right, we got to get off to a good start. So, you do all this, and, and then you go out there and, and have that sort of game, man. It's, it's just – it's brutal. It's just brutal. There were some other upsets like uh, – well, the Bucks were like five-and-a-half, six-point underdogs in this one. Um, so that didn't turn out well for for the favorites. Let's see. Who else – was there, there was another upset or two, wasn't there, or no? Um, I'm trying to think of who uh, – Miami had a big win. Tua looked good. Rams crushed back. the Seahawks. Yeah, that. Speaking of Dave Canales' old team, mm-hmm. yeah, they buried him. Um, the Eagles Pace- got off to a big lead against the Patriots. Patriots came back, but couldn't not come far enough. Yeah, and and the Steelers got absolutely obliterated by the Forty Nine ers. I think they had one yard in the first half. <laughs> I mean that that is the number one defense, and Bosa I guess played a little bit, but yeah, that's 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 the they're dogs, man. Like Deion Sanders has dogs and leaders. They're all mm-hmm. dogs. They can all flat play. It's impressive to watch them go. Um, New Orleans, I think, won. They did. Um, the uh, Falcons beat the uh, Panthers in the division. Yeah, so th- so three division teams win. The one that didn't was playing a division team, mm-hmm. um, which will happen again next week, I'm sure. Yep, and then but, you get Bills and Jets uh, tonight. Yeah, that's going to be fun. A Raj and you know all the uh, crazy stories around him and whatnot. I'm happy football's back. It was fun. It was fun sitting up there. This is a beautiful stadium. You're down kind of mid level um, where our, our press area is, and you know they do a nice job in the game day operations and everybody there at US Bank. And I think, or I would hope that, and I know there was a story in the Tampa Bay Times on TampaBay.com about Stuart Sternberg. Um, in in a home ballpark, like I yeah. hope that whoever does it makes it like U.S. Bank in terms of lots of glass, so that mm-hmm. there is this free flow of sunlight. You really do forget sometimes that that you're in this dome. And of course, they want sort of 
more common areas in the next ballpark as opposed to seats and you know they want to mm-hmm. people to be able to move around and stuff um but yeah uh it's just well done yeah and yeah the article in the times saying Stuart Sternberg willing to put up 600 million of a 1.2 billion dollar stadium i'm impressed by that i yeah. am 50% and he, he, now he's looking I'm for impressed. some investors to maybe buy a portion of the team to help raise that funds i but. saw that yeah but it doesn't necessarily say he will do it, but he he has opportunity. I well, guess, to I mean, do it. you know, if you're looking for a minority interest, I mean, you know, right, right. Jeff Vinnick has sold twenty to thirty percent of the Lightning to minority yeah. in- the owners. They have no say you in anything. Just, but you just want a controlling interest. It's, it's getting it. cash, and yeah, you know, if cash you're gonna if you're gonna pay six hundred million dollars of a stadium, you might need to raise some capital. So yeah, cash cash is good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> cash is really good to have around. No doubt about it. Um, Cash and so Kevin Cash is good to have around. Kevin Cash is also good to have around. They they beat the Mar- I I watched game one, and they, and they could not, you know, they got behind. They couldn't come back. And then the next three, I don't know about this game, but, like, the next couple nights, you know what? The Rays just kind of found a way. And to win three out of four against that Seattle team, I think, is a, one of their more impressive series this year. Well, going into the series, Seattle was the team the Rays would be playing if the playoffs started today. Now Seattle has fallen to the third wild card team. Oh, have they? So if the if the playoffs started today, the Rays would actually host the Blue Jays. Oh, okay. Uh, but the, I mean, that's all neck and neck there. Yeah. The the uh, the Red Sox are right in there as well. I think they're like yeah. a half game back. But. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. It's. Uh, I mean, look. To, and the Rays, most of the the games they have left are against playoff teams. Mm-hmm. So this is not an easy stretch for them. They have one of the hardest schedules. Going forward, I mean, they're in Minnesota now, then Baltimore. That's a huge series against Baltimore. Any shot to win the division. Yeah. And and the, the key is the Rays have to sweep all four games in that series to win the season right. series. Right. If they don't sweep, if they win three or four or split it or win less, then you have to finish a game ahead of Baltimore at the end of the season to win the division. Because you can't tie them, right? There's no more game 163s. Baseball yeah. got rid of that with the increased wild cards and stuff. Now it's com- now it goes to tiebreakers. Got it. So the head to head. So if you it, 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 you know, I don't know if you can sweep Baltimore in Baltimore right now. Baltimore's hot, although they lost today. Yeah, they haven't um, lost in a long time, man. Let they had won seven two, or eight in a row before Sunday's loss. Two in a row almost never happens these days. But I mean, you know, if you're the Rays, you're facing at the Twins, at the Orioles, you get the Angels at home who aren't very good. And now they're talking about they might entertain offers for Mike Trout if he wants to be oh, wow. Um Then you host Toronto, then you're at Boston and at Toronto. Mm-hmm. And all, the, all those teams except the Angels are fighting for playoff spots. Oh, that's going to be crazy, man. So it's a tough schedule going forward. But they keep finding a way. They do. And they had the walk-off home run the other night by Yandy. That was, that was big. His first ever walk-off hit. I saw that. I thought that was crazy, right? I mean, I know he's a leadoff hitter, but that doesn't matter after the first inning. But well, yeah. But but uh, I didn't realize this either. He's Any only been up. He's only been up with the opportunity one other time. Oh well, there you go. <laughs> but I mean, you, you would think of all the time you'd have chances. Yeah. Yeah, that's a weird one. That's a, that's a really strange one, man. And it was an oppo shot too. Yeah, it was, and it had this, it, it, you know, the old Mike Shannon from the Cardinals would be like, get up, get up. He would have been yelling. Um, I didn't think it was going to go out. but I didn't either. Did. I was there. I two, didn't think it was going to go out. <laughs> about two rows. Uh, yeah, kind of just, you know. It's a big home run and is a, is a nice series mm-hmm. win for them. They just keep yep. chugging along, man. I don't know if they're going to get there, but they're going to host They're going to get to the playoffs. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And they're at 88 wins now. Yeah. So I think the Braves have actually clinched a spot already. They're the first mm-hmm. team. Yeah. Well, there's still a bunch of teams in the East that could get in, too, with mm-hmm. them, which I don't want to see if you're a race fan. No. I don't think you really want to reward yeah. reward that no. that division, but, you know, it's happened before. But they're they're finding a way to pitch. They're finding a way to get key hits. Like, it's crazy, man. Yeah. And then how about the state of Florida and college football? All the big schools for the first Sweet. time since, what, 2018, one on the same yeah. day? Congratulations to Alex Golish, by the way. You have picked up your first win, albeit not a division, not a 1A team, I guess mm-hmm. what they call it nowadays. FCS. 
Yep. Yeah. The exactly. football championship series. Right. Although is it right. still going to be that when they have a twelve team playoff in the I FBS? Because now you can. I don't know. I don't know. It's so confusing. <laughs> College football. After this year, I'm probably done with it because I can't follow it anymore. But uh, that was a nice win. It, it was. I, and, you know, one thing I could tell you about Alex Golish, he's aggressive. Mm-hmm. Yes, he is. They went for it a lot on fourth downs. And some they made, some they didn't. Yeah. Um, but he was going to be aggressive. He was going to let his offense, you know, do its thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but a good good win for USF. Uh, now they get Alabama this week, so who's you know? Hey, the same record, one and one. Uh, yeah, and that's where the similarities end. <laughs> um, although Texas was very impressive, they're coming to the SEC next year, but they kind of said, "Yeah, yeah, we're here. You, really want, inv- you want to invite <laughs> us? We're here." Like Deion Sanders' team, we're here. We are here. Do you believe? Do you believe? You don't believe? That was our friend Ed Werder, by the way. So yes. uncomfortable. Ed was funny. He was on Rich Eyes. He goes, that's not even close to the worst things ever happened to me. He goes, I had a player threaten to kill me. He goes, what? <laughs> he goes, yeah. He goes, I, I wrote something about how, you know, despite his, you know, great career and, and numbers that Terrell Owens was the most disruptive player the Cowboys ever ever had. And he goes, and then I went to practice because that's what you do when you're a real journalist. You show up the next day. If anybody has any trouble with you. And he goes, I go out to practice, Werder said during the interview. And he goes, and Tank Johnson, uh, wants to kill me so he's gonna kill me and he goes and then he asked me for my address and i go look if you're gonna kill me i'm not gonna make it easy for you <laughs> just give me my address <laughs> and he goes that's the first time the only time i actually went out and i bought a gun just thinking i might need it for protection and he goes of course he didn't do anything you know but he had been around people before that that had done stuff <laughs> so he's like i wouldn't take any chances man he goes so yeah dion dion asked me a question about what i believed and he read some bull stuff. He goes, I haven't written in 25 years. I've been on TV. I don't write anymore. <laughs> so it was funny, man. But here, if you're Tank Johnson, I mean, ask for the address first. <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, man, I'm going to kill you, man. What's your address? <laughs> it should just be, hey, man, I, I, I might have a package for you, man. What's your address? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to send it. And it's going to be it's gonna be ticking when you get <laughs> like. Come up with a more creative way, but yeah, I thought it was funny. It goes, look, if you're gonna kill me, Tank, I'm not gonna make it easy for you. I'll give you my address. Come on, do a little bit of work, man, or hire somebody. <laughs> uh, and Miami, Miami had a good win. So we get back to college football, but that was solid over A and M. Over A, yeah. What forty eight thirty three? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I'm not sure how much longer Jimbo's gonna last in. Uh, well, the money, it's just they couldn't pay them off. I mean, really, they, oh, they I could. think they would have. They could. They got enough know, donors that if, if they want They don't to want to, I guess. I don't know. I mean, that's how SMU's getting into the ACC. They're not <laughs> taking true. television rights for like six or seven years because they have some billionaire donating $200 million. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Florida State uh, looked good again. Yeah, playing Southern Miss. I mean, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a big, you yeah. know, big damn whoop, but. They stayed number three in the country in the AP poll. Texas moved up to four. Makes sense. I like, uh, was it yours for Texas? Yes. Dude can ball, man. And he, he has cleaned up his act, like, just from a year ago. He's cut his hair. Looks very straight and narrow. Well, yeah, he got rid uh, of the mullet. Got rid of the mullet, yeah, which was he was famous for. And his personal habits have changed, including, I guess he he. he Found his faith. He attends mm-hmm. church a lot. Like he's he's lost twenty. But he looks different because he's lost yep. like twenty pounds. Yep. And, and that mobility shows up in, when he's playing the quarterback position. He was great. He made some deep throws. He was uh, he went after Alabama. Man, it was a good win, huge win. We were really. talking beforehand. How much would Ohio State like to have him back? Oh my God, <laughs> Ohio State would like to have a lot of players they let go back. Like Joe Burrow would be one of them, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I mean that that dude that dude can flat out play. So. It's, it was a it was a great week one. It was a great college uh, week as well. Um, and again, the the Bucks will have their home opener against the Chicago Bears. I think there's going to be a lot of Bears fans there. Maybe not. Maybe some cancellations <laughs> happened after their loss to the Packers. I don't know. Oh, you know what I was going to tell you? Well, we'll save it for later. I think I'm right about this though. The U there's a USF quarterback who has a famous uncle. Yes. He was at the game on Saturday. He was night. there. He was there. And I know him. I know you do. Personally. 
John Legend's uh, nephew. Mm -hmm. John Legend was there, was at USF. And, uh, and of course, how do I know John Legend? Well, I just was fortunate enough to meet him. Hold on. Let me grab that. Yeah, I know. I dropped the big name. It's legendary name. <laughs> uh, is when uh, we were at somewhere in New York for something. I think it was a, probably a, a game, a, a Super Bowl or something. And Jerry Rice was going to the Hall of Fame the next year, and he knew it. And went to some re reception that for the NFL, and for whatever reason, there was a lot of people there, but John Legend was there. And it just turns out, because he ran into his brother first, it just turned out that his favorite football player growing up, uh, he, I guess he grew up in Ohio, Yes, uh, was Jerry Rice. Mm-hmm. And so he wore 80 and all that stuff. So he's, he was like, would you like to perform? Could you perform some songs? Or would I? Yeah, that was my, that's my guy, you know. And, um, and his brother, the funny thing about him, he's like a, he's a savant when it comes to playing the piano and stuff. He graduated high school at 12, from what I understand. But his brother uh, is just a phenomenal artist. Like, you know, draws you know, to, to, like, to the best best of the best but um what a talented family but yeah how about that john legend in the house you gotta be a good program if you got john legend in the house well legendary i mean i know they got matthew mcconaughey at texas but all right all right all right all right all right well wel welcome to the sec you invite us in that's what we do well fun week fun weekend so i am uh getting ready to uh get a couple hours sleep and Go ahead and get on a plane back to Tampa. Todd Bowles will talk around 1230, I want to say. Uh, Injury-wise, they seem to come out of it pretty good. Levante David will have further evaluation of his uh, possible concussion, et cetera, but they did let him go back in the game, so I imagine he's going to be okay. Uh, Devin White tweaked something in his leg but came back and played the whole game. So they weren't that much worse for wear, um, but, you know, it's still a – Tremendous win week one. Week one's always, I think, you know what happens when you don't win week one or week week, week two sometimes? That first, you're always chasing that first victory. You know what I mean? And nobody thinks or plans on going like 0-17. Oh, but in the back of your mind, right, it's possible. But you just want to get going. You know, you just want a victory. And if you can get it in week one, um, now you're kind of playing a little bit with house money. So that's that's a big win for the Bucks. All right, uh, we will be back, and um, what do we got this week? We'll probably have Matt Baker at some point. We'll get Matt Baker. We'll uh, mailbag if you guys want to send them in. Yeah, get your mailbag questions, and we may have a surprise guest too. Oh yeah, okay. I don't know who, but you'll surprise me with it, right? Yeah, ab absolutely. Okay, those great. are the best guests. Well, go ahead and do that. You can do it. Uh, send us the questions uh, on Twitter at Sports Day TV. Reach me on Twitter at NFL Stroud or. My email address is rstroud at tampabay.com. Thanks for listening, everybody. For Steve Burstick, I'm Stroud, Tampa Times. Have a great day. <laughs>